Welcome to the Diabetes and Driving chapter. My name is Dr. Robin Holden. I am Professor and Chair of the Division of Endocrinology at Queen's University. I was the lead author for this chapter and was assisted by co-authors Laurie Berard, Dr. Josh Lakoff, Dr. Vincent Wu, and Dr. Jean-Francois Yale. This was a new chapter for the Diabetes Canada Guidelines. It contains new information on management of hypoglycemia prior to driving and when a healthcare provider should report a driver with diabetes. Diabetes can affect driving performance due to chronic complications which impair sensory or motor function. These include retinopathy, neuropathy, amputation, and vascular disease. It can affect driving performance due to transient cognitive dysfunction or loss of consciousness from antihyperglycemic medication-induced hypoglycemia. This is primarily related to insulin or insulin secretagogues. And it can finally affect driving performance due to other medical disorders, such as sleep apnea that is often associated with type 2 diabetes. A key principle is that the fitness of people with diabetes to drive should be assessed on an individual basis as per provincial regulations. Case control studies suggest drivers with diabetes pose a modestly increased but acceptable risk of motor vehicle accidents compared to drivers without diabetes, but many studies are limited and or poor quality. Older studies may no longer be relevant due to changes in road conditions, motor vehicles, and diabetes management. Unrecognized hypoglycemia is the most relevant driving hazard for drivers with diabetes. A number of studies have examined driving performance with a driving simulator during induced hypoglycemia in individuals with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Studies in type 1 diabetes have demonstrated that driving performance starts to deteriorate at blood glucose levels below 3.8 millimoles per liter. In one study, only 30% of drivers self-treated their low blood glucose and the treatment occurred only when the blood glucose was less than or equal to 2.8 millimoles per liter. Fewer than 25% were aware that their driving performance was impaired. The ability of deciding when it is safe to drive may be unreliable or absent in those with hypoglycemia and awareness. During a driving simulator study, only 4% of those with normal hypoglycemia awareness stated that they would drive when hypoglycemic, compared to 43% with impaired awareness of hypoglycemia. Studies have demonstrated that cognitive function may not recover until 40 minutes or more after restoration of euglycemia. Hypoglycemia is not a problem for drivers with diabetes treated with healthy behavior interventions like diet and physical activity alone, nor is it a problem for drivers with diabetes treated with most non-insulin antihypoglycemic medications when used as monotherapy or in combination with each other. Treatment with insulin secretagogues may provoke higher rates of hypoglycemia when used alone or in combination with other non-insulin antihypoglycemic medications, including the elderly. Studies of rates of motor vehicle accidents and drivers with diabetes have consistently described the highest rates for individuals treated with insulin. Factors that have been shown to increase driving risk include previous episodes of severe hypoglycemia within the past two years, with a greater risk in those with lower A1C levels, previous hypoglycemia while driving, and absence of blood glucose monitoring before driving. These risks may be mitigated by frequent blood glucose testing or use of a real-time continuous glucose monitoring device. Use of a memory glucose meter is recommended so that measurements can be assessed by the healthcare team and by driving authorities if indicated. The risk for commercial vehicle drivers is higher than that for private drivers as they are on the road many hours of the day or night, thus increasing their time exposure. The consequences of a motor vehicle accident involving a commercial vehicle are also likely to be more serious, particularly if the vehicle carries passengers or dangerous goods. As a result, higher medical standards are applied for all commercial vehicle drivers. People with diabetes should play an active role in assessing their fitness to drive and should have a duty to report conditions that may potentially impair their ability to drive safely, such as hypoglycemia and awareness, and episodes of severe hypoglycemia while driving, or while awake but not driving. However, studies have demonstrated limited patient awareness of and adherence to recommendations for safe driving, 
as few as 15% of adults routinely perform self-monitoring of blood glucose before driving. Healthcare providers play an important role in assessing the individual's fitness to drive. They have a duty to report unfit drivers according to provincial or territorial regulations. They also play a critical role in educating people with diabetes on strategies to reduce their risk of hypoglycemia while driving. However, it's important to recognize that currently many drivers with diabetes receive little or no advice. In a large multinational study, only 52% of drivers with type 1 diabetes and 27% with type 2 diabetes had discussed driving guidelines with their physician. The 2018 guidelines contain an appendix entitled Sample Diabetes and Driving Assessment Form to assist health care providers in assessing the fitness of people with diabetes to drive safely. Currently, 10 Canadian provinces and territories have a mandatory reporting system obliging medical practitioners to report to the appropriate regulatory body those people who have conditions that impair their driving ability. Federal organizations such as the Canadian Council of Motor Transport Administrators, should have consistent, clear, and easily accessible reporting mechanisms for physicians and nurse practitioners. In addition, provincial and territorial ministries of transportation should include information on their websites about diabetes and driving, and which types of people with diabetes should be reported. A study in Ontario showed that a program of medical warnings issued to over 100,000 people over a three-year period for a variety of different medical issues, including alcoholism, epilepsy, dementia, sleep disorders, and diabetes, resulted in a 45% reduction in annual accident rates when compared with the period before the warning. And now let's review the five recommendations in this chapter. Recommendation one is that fitness of people with diabetes to drive should be assessed on an individual basis, grade D consensus. People with diabetes should take an active role in assessing their ability to drive safely. Recommendation two is that all drivers with diabetes should undergo a comprehensive medical examination at least every two years by a physician or nurse practitioner competent in managing people with diabetes. The medical examination should include an assessment of glycemic control, frequency and severity of hypoglycemia, symptomatic awareness of hypoglycemia, and the presence of retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy, amputation, and cardiovascular disease to identify whether any of these factors could significantly increase the risk of a motor vehicle accident. Commercial drivers should also undergo a medical examination at the time of application for a commercial license. Recommendation three is that drivers with diabetes treated with insulin secretagogues and or insulin should maintain a log of their self-monitoring blood glucose measurements either by using a memory-equipped blood glucose meter or electronic record of blood glucose measurements performed at a frequency deemed appropriate by the person with diabetes and their health care team. For commercial drivers, for initial commercial license application, the record should include the last six months or since the diagnosis of diabetes of less than six months. Blood glucose logs should be verifiable on request. Part B is that they should always have blood glucose monitoring equipment and supplies of rapidly absorbed carbohydrate within easy reach, for example, attached to the driver's side visor or in the center console. Part C of Recommendation 3 states that drivers with diabetes treated with insulin secretagogues and or insulin should consider measuring their blood glucose level immediately before and at least every four hours while driving or wear a real-time continuous glucose monitoring device. Part D states they should not drive when their blood glucose is less than 4 millimoles per liter. This is a grade C level 3 recommendation for type 1 diabetes, grade D consensus for type 2 diabetes. If the blood glucose level is less than 4, they should not drive until at least 40 minutes after successful treatment of hypoglycemia has increased their blood glucose level to at least 5 millimoles per liter. Grade C level 3 for type 1 diabetes, grade D consensus for type 2 diabetes. And Part E of Recommendation 3 states drivers with diabetes treated with insulin secretagogues and or insulin must refrain from driving immediately if they experience severe hypoglycemia while driving and notify their health care provider as soon as possible, no longer than 72 hours. Recommendation 4 states private and commercial drivers with diabetes and hypoglycemia awareness 
or history of severe hypoglycemia in the past 12 months must measure their blood glucose level immediately before and at least every two hours while driving or wear a real-time continuous glucose monitoring device. Recommendation 5 states, if any of the following occur, healthcare professionals should inform people with diabetes treated with insulin secretagogues and or insulin to no longer drive and should report their concerns about the person's fitness to drive to the appropriate driving licensing body. A is for any episode of severe hypoglycemia while driving in the past 12 months, and B is if more than one episode of severe hypoglycemia while awake but not driving in the past six months for private drivers and in the past 12 months for commercial drivers. The key messages for healthcare providers in the chapter include the fitness of people with diabetes to drive should be assessed on an individual basis. All drivers with diabetes should undergo a medical examination at least every two years to assess fitness to drive. Commercial drivers should undergo an assessment at the time of application for a commercial license and as per provincial requirements thereafter. Other key messages include people with diabetes should play an active role in assessing their fitness to drive. Healthcare professionals should educate people with diabetes about strategies to reduce their risk for hypoglycemia while driving. They should also identify and inform individuals with diabetes at higher risk for motor vehicle accidents. And the key messages that have been developed for people with diabetes include, if you take insulin and or an insulin secretagogue and intend to drive, consider measuring your blood glucose level immediately before driving. Always keep an emergency supply of fast-acting carbohydrates such as dextrose tablets with an easy reach inside the vehicle and carry your glucose meter and supplies. Consider measuring your blood glucose level immediately before driving. If you develop symptoms of hypoglycemia and at least every four hours while driving, you can also wear a real-time continuous blood glucose monitoring device. If you take insulin and or an insulin secretagogue and intend to drive, consider measuring your blood glucose more frequently if there are factors that may increase your risk of hypoglycemia, such as recent physical activity or a delay in eating or skipping a meal. If you have a history of recurrent severe hypoglycemia or have hypoglycemia on awareness, you must measure your blood glucose immediately before and at least every two hours while driving or wear a real-time continuous blood glucose monitoring device. If you take insulin and or insulin secretagogue and intend to drive, do not start driving if your blood glucose level is less than 4 millimoles per liter. If your blood glucose is less than 4, do not start driving until you have ingested 15 grams of carbohydrate, you have retested and your blood glucose is at least 5 millimoles per liter. It is suggested to wait for 40 minutes as it takes time for judgment and reflexes to the brain to recover fully from hypoglycemia. If you take insulin and or an insulin secretagogue and intend to drive, if hypoglycemia develops while driving, stop the vehicle in a safe location and remove the keys from the ignition. Treat the low blood glucose and consider waiting 40 minutes before driving. On longer journeys, take regular meals, snacks, and periods of rest. Immediately notify your healthcare provider and your driving licensing body if you experience any episode of severe hypoglycemia while driving or you experience more than one episode of severe hypoglycemia while awake but not driving in the past six months if you are a private driver or in the past 12 months if you are a commercial driver. I encourage you to review the full text of the chapter available at the Diabetes Canada Guidelines website. Educational tools for healthcare providers and people with diabetes on diabetes and driving have also been developed by the Dissemination and Implementation Committee and are also available on the website. The same information can be obtained by downloading the app.